How art thou, you silly motherfuckers? Welcome, bike. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. And what we're doing today, some, something silly. We're on brand. You're being silly. I'm being silly. We're going to take the 2021 class. We're going to take the 2022 class. And we're going to smush them together. Okay? We're going to re-rank them from 1 to 24. Two rounds of a super flex draft. Basically taking what we know from the rookie class this year. And then what we know from last year's rookie class based on their first year of playing. So this is not necessarily looking at last year's class as prospects and re-ranking them because that doesn't actually help y'all outside of having fun. We're not here to have fun. We're here for business, okay? This is going to be helpful for Dynasty. It's almost like taking just these players and re-ranking them for a dynasty. Like if you're doing a Dynasty startup tomorrow and you need to differentiate between this year's rookie class and last year's rookie class based on what we already know from last year, like Jamar Chase popped off. He's obviously going to be at top of this list. We need to know that for Dynasty Startup Drafts. If you've never been in a Dynasty Startup Draft, you can join the Discord. The Discord is absolutely free to join. The BDG Discord, free to join. The link is down below. Hop in there. There are channels to join Dynasty Leagues. Come in. Yell at me a little bit. I'll yell bike at you even more. So just get ready for that. Discord, join it today. Top 24 rankings of this year's class plus last year's class based on every piece of data and knowledge we know at this moment in time. I'm ready to roll. Let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's see. Okay, with the 101 in this draft. I don't think there's an argument to be made. I don't think I need to even spew words about this man, but Jamar Chase is the obvious 101. You know, one of the better prospects in a long time at the wide receiver position and then outperformed the hype that he had coming into the year. Locked in with Joe Burrow for the next 10 years, if not more, they are going to make magic. They are going to make many babies metaphorically out in Cincinnati because many people will be celebrating based off the success that Jamar Chase is about to have for the next 10 years. If I'm redrafting both of these classes together, based on what we know right now in a dynasty startup draft, Jamar Chase is going to be the guy that goes first out of these two classes. Number two, and this is an interesting dichotomy here because I have Najee Harris as the 102. We have Kyle Pitts as the 103. The way I'm thinking about this is if I'm in a dynasty startup draft and I did one Last week, it was like an expert draft together with some other dudes in the industry. It was a one quarterback league. I was up at the 104. I took Najee Harris. Kyle Pitts didn't go until I think like the 112, the 201. And I think that makes sense. I don't think most people are trying to pull Kyle Pitts up at the 104, or the 105 in a dynasty startup draft. But Najee Harris is for sure going off the board very, very early in dynasty startup drafts. However, the case can easily be made that Najee Harris is already a 24-year-old running back. We don't really know his future situation. So before things really get tied down in Pittsburgh, you know, he might be like 26 years old. And that's a lot of reaching, obviously. But I'm, I'm painting the narrative for why you might take Kyle Pitts over him. Kyle Pitts is obviously coming off a thousand yard season, something that we just do not see for rookie tight ends. And he's so young. He's barely 21 years old. So the narrative can be easy to be made. The argument I would make is like, if you're actually in a dynasty startup draft, you're probably not taking Kyle Pitts over Najee Harris, just straight up. Like if you started a dynasty startup draft tomorrow and you're sitting at the 105, I would, I, I think you're a liar if you're saying you're taking Pitts over Najee Harris. That's why I think about it. And it's kind of interesting because I was looking at the sleeper ADP and uh, there's a weird like psychology behind it. If you look at Sleeper's Dynasty ADP right now, but you only look at one quarterback league ADP, if you don't look at the Superflex league ADP, Najee Harris is fourth off the board. And that makes sense. That's probably about right. After Jamar Chase, Jefferson, Jonathan Taylor, et cetera, there's Najee Harris in that like four or five, six range. Kyle Pitts is going at the back of the first round. Also makes sense, right? The, the most prized tight end in Dynasty startup drafts. When you look at Superflex ADP, though, they're back to back. They are bike to bike there. Najee Harris is like the 111. Kyle Pitts is the 112, 201. There's a little bit more psychology when I think it goes into super flex leagues. And this is why I always preach that I think you guys should be changing to super flex leagues and dynasty and redraft all of it. I think when you start drafting for a more well rounded team, which is what super flex. Uh, pushes you to do right if you're in a one quarterback league a lot of times just your pure, pure running backs kind of insinuate whether or not a team does really really well but when you're when you're drafting in a super flex dynasty startup you have to worry about all the positions you have to worry about building a well-rounded team and i think it, it it has this little switch in your psychology that for whatever reason makes kyle pitts more valuable and you could see it in the adp but the way i'm thinking about it is like if you are in a one quarterback startup 
you're taking Najee Harris over Kyle Pitts every single time, even if you don't really want to, even if you're thinking about it in a raw vacuum, that's just what ends up happening. So I have Najee Harris over Kyle Pitts coming off a monster rookie year, obviously a ton of catches, which is what like he did in college. But a lot of players who do it in college don't always translate into the NFL. It was great to see him do it immediately off the rip. So, you know, you're talking about 70 catches as a rookie. So I think we're safe to say he's going to be a 50 catch floor player for a very, very long time in this league. Those kind of players don't come around often. 20 touches per game also don't come around often at the running back position. So I'll take Najee Harris here, Kyle Pitts at the three. Then we have two running backs back to back at 104, 105, Javante Williams and Brees Hall. And again, this is not Javante Williams as a prospect over Brees Hall because Brees Hall was a better pure prospect at the time of the NFL draft than Javante Williams was. But given what we know now, seeing how good Javante Williams was as a rookie and going forward, Javante Williams is going to get his time. Okay, He's still very, very young, right? It might not be this year because Melvin Gordon resigned. We'll see the work go a little bit more towards Javante Williams in his favor. He ranked very, very highly amongst every like per touch efficiency metric that you're going to find out there. We know he's a good running back at this point. We just need the opportunity. And now he has Russell Wilson, man. When the opportunity does hit, motherfucker's going to overdose for your fantasy team. That's all I got to say there. Brees Hall at the 105 seems like a steal because his prospect profile is almost flawless. It really is close to flawless. Elite college production for three straight seasons, a very good pass catcher, size, speed. Like he's underrated as much as the hype has got to a high level for Brees Hall, he's actually underrated in my opinion as a prospect because you know you can't really put him into the Jonathan Taylor realm, but he's like as close to you're going to get as a prospect to a guy like Jonathan Taylor. Just based off all the numbers and anything that you can look at, there are not a lot of holes in his game outside of like some stupid fucking idiot on Twitter being like his contact balance isn't like shut your fucking pie hole. Shut your pie hole and enjoy Brees Hall at the 105. So if I'm in a dynasty startup, I'm probably taking Javante Williams over Brees Hall, but they're right there. And this is where things start to get interesting because we have the quarterbacks last year who were very hyped up. We had five guys. We had Trey Lance, Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields. And they were, for the most part, you know, five first round rookie picks. And they all still fall in the first round for me. However, they're sprinkled out a little bit differently than the order that they were picked in. I have Trey Lance at the 106. So he is my first quarterback of these two classes combined that if I'm starting a dynasty team today, I would prefer to have him over the rest. I know there are probably as many red flags as for Trey Lance as there are for any of these quarterbacks right now. The upside is just too tantalizing for me. If you follow me for a long time, I'm an upside guy. Um, this guy gets on the field, has a really shitty game, and still puts up like 18 and a half fantasy points. And that's what we're getting from Trey Lance. My concern with Trey Lance from like a football perspective is like the hesitation that San Francisco has had to put this guy on the field after drafting him third overall is a giant red flag. Like they're seeing something that we're not behind the scenes, obviously, that is making them hesitate to put this kid on the field. Like Jimmy G might get another go at being their starter for the next 17 fucking games in San Francisco. That is a very like coin flip realistic possibility out here. So Trey Lance is a guy that, you know, it sucks to have to sit on him, but you're going to be really happy that you invested into into him immediately. Uh, so Trey Lance is my 106. He's got the weapons around him. He's got the scheme. He's got the, like he's got everything there for when he does step on the field. It's also like the other hesitation I have, and I know I'm like making a terrible point of why he's my quarterback one, but I like to paint both sides of the picture so that y'all can figure out whether or not you want to purchase it, right? Trey Lance, guys, he didn't play COVID year. He had a red shirt freshman year, a uh, red shirt rookie year. So we're going on like his third year of not really playing football. That's another kind of scary thing. Like, how long are we going to let this this young kid sit out for um, before he gets on the field? Everything that we've heard in the offseason, however, up to this point, seems like they are preparing him for, for him to be the starting quarterback this year, which is something that, you know, gives me less hesitancy to pull the trigger as 106. We were in the office arguing yesterday. Animal and uh, Tony were saying they would take Trevor Lawrence over Trey Lance. Me and Sexy were saying I would take Trey Lance over Trevor Lawrence. Curious to know what you guys would do down in the comment section. If you're doing a dynasty startup draft today, like, listen, Trevor Lawrence, really bad rookie year. I'm not afraid to draft him, but there are definitely some like hesitations. He's still in the Jaguars fucking offense and franchise. Sure, they're trying to put pieces around him, but like Christian Kirk as your wide receiver one, DJ Chark is gone. And like, what what are they really doing over there in Jacksonville? That's pushing Trevor Lawrence to play better, right? They switched their coach up. Sure. Uh, he didn't run a ton last year either, which is something I thought we'd see a little bit more of given what he did in Clemson, right? I think he had 17 rushing touchdowns over the final two years. It's just not a good offense. Uh, their offensive line is like creeping up a little bit, but it's not really there yet. So I think over the next two years, we're going to see much better fantasy production out of Trey Lance over Trevor Lawrence. And that's realistically is about as far as you want to go in terms of like trying to project fantasy players. Cause you know, we're not, 
We're terrible at DFS. So you think you could predict a weekend in sports? You can't. You can't predict a week. We're terrible at sit starts. You can't predict a year of fantasy football. So you're trying to predict three years down the line. Ain't fucking happening, fam. Ain't happening. All right. So Trey Lance 106, Trevor Lawrence 107. And then this is where I go Jalen Waddle. Again, I've been on the cautious side when it comes to Jalen Waddle. Like he's not someone I'm targeting even in season long drafts. I think his number on prize picks right now is 1050 in terms of receiving yards. So it's good. It's not great. They add Tyree Kill there, and Tyree Kill is going to be there for at least three or four years, which means they have a, a different alpha than Jalen Waddle for at least three to four years. And it's kind of disappointing after a monster rookie year. But a lot of Jalen Waddle's rookie year production came off volume. Like if you look at his per touch efficiency metric, if you look at like what he did on a per pass basis, yards per reception, yards per out run, like all that stuff, not great. It was just a lot of short dump offs. And he's such a speedster that like you would like to see Tua take more shots down the field to him. Does he get that with Tyreek there now? Like, I don't I don't really know. I don't really know what to make of J- Jalen Waddle. Like great rookie year, but you could paint the picture on either side of why he's so great that you continue need to feed him the ball or why most of that was volume based and like he's going to sit around those statistics for the next couple of years. I'd say Jalen Waddle just because he's going to hold value for a long time. Then you have Mac Jones who same case like he's going to be a starter for the Patriots for a long time and he's going to be a fine QB2 for you in fantasy. I think with Mac Jones down at 109 is like the upside's you know, and maybe I'm writing him off too quickly, but I feel like the upside is probably not much, much higher than what we saw last year. Maybe not fair because he was a rookie and obviously he can improve. They add Taekwon Thornton. They'll add other weapons as like the years progress. But this is clearly a team that wants to uh, depend on the ground game and not, you know, have Mac Jones aired out 40 times a game. So I don't know what the ceiling is for Mac Jones. Love him as a first round pick. You know, he's a solid again, QB2 in your super flex league. Then we move on to Zach Wilson, who's right behind him. Zach Wilson is obviously risky, but they're doing everything they can in New York to make sure this kid succeeds. Elijah Moore. Garrett Wilson, talk about both of them in a second, bring in a bunch of tight ends, CJ Ozama, Jeremy Ruckert, Brees Hall, obviously, they got Corey Davis coming back from injury, Michael Carter, great pass catcher, the offensive line is taking a big step up, so everything around Zach Wilson is there, like, I just can't see a world where he fails, like, floor statistically wise, you know, this is, this is like a Michael Jordan at the end of Space Jam type reach here, but I'm in on Zach Wilson for this year, man, I want to see what he does, I'd be, I'd be excited to have him in Dynasty, obviously, there's risk involved, and there are a lot of players remaining on the board but like quarterbacks and super flex leagues again these are rankings for super flex obviously two quarterbacks this is a one quarterback league we're not uh we're not taking these guys in the first round there are a lot of good prospects that we would prefer over them Travis Etienne would be one of them in a one quarterback league who I take at the 111 Travis Etienne I made the case for him in uh must have running backs earlier this week so if you missed that video I took a look at early ADP data right now from sleeper of the running backs and based on where he's going fifth sixth round but based on where he's going in dynasty and dynasty startups he's like a fifth sixth round pick as well he's a guy that coming off the list frank injury but he has a ton of time to heal obviously it's a serious injury he had surgery the chances of recovering fully are a little bit lower in that case but again he's not pushing the timetable at all which is making me more confident but can't forget how good of a prospect he was again 215 running a, a real 40 yard dash really good pass catcher reunited with the quarterback again and trevor lawrence that Fed him all those passes, okay? James Robinson's going to you know, have to come back from the Achilles tear. Who knows if he comes back successfully? Who knows if uh, he even comes back this year? He is uh, an undrafted free agent, so that means he's on a three-year contract, ends at the end of this year. He will be a restricted free agent, so they can bring him back and you know, that would, that there, there's a good chance that happens. Um, but I still like Travis Etienne's explosiveness, pass catching ability. He's a guy, he's one of those few guys like the DeAndre Swift mold where even on a 15 touch per game basis, like he'll be explosive enough and get valuable enough touches where he is a big time playmaker uh, for the Jags and for your fantasy team. He doesn't need to be a 25 touch per game guy because of the other attributes he brings to the field. So we have Travis Etienne at the 111, Justin Fields at the 112. I'm gonna be honest, man. I'm easily going on record here, and I don't think this is really a hot take right now, but I'm nervous about, if you were nervous at all about Trevor Lawrence's rookie year, you need to be equally and exponentially uh, as nervous about Justin Fields. He didn't look good. And you could be like, oh, you know, they didn't put the preachers, the coach, et cetera, et cetera. But like they didn't change fucking anything for this kid. They are not trying to have him succeed. I don't know what they're doing out there in Chicago, but it ain't good. So Fields drops basically from last year. He was, I think, like the 102, 103 in most Superflex rookie drafts down to the 112 for me when combining the two classes. And through the first round, we have Chase, Harris, Pitts, Javante, Lance. So the only rookie we have in the first round of this year is Brees Hall. And of course, that's going to be skewed a little bit because we have more data based on the sophomores and what they did in their rookie year. And that class was very quarterback heavy. So they hold their value in super flex leagues. So I keep Justin Fields in the first round at the 112 because I just want quarterbacks over fringe or, you know, uh, wide receivers that are 
not necessarily needle movers. They're nice to have on your team, but I would always take the positional scarcity of a quarterback in the Superflex League, which is why we have Justin Fields at the 112. Once we get into the second round, things get far less clear. So in order to clear up your life a little bit, what you're going to want to do is scroll down. You know, if you're enjoying the video so far, obviously just hit the thumbs up. Let's me know that you appreciate it. I'll keep making these, of course. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. But hit that first link in the description next to Felix Gray. If y'all are new to the channel, you haven't heard me fucking yap about Felix Gray yet, but I absolutely love this product more than anything in the entire world. Felix Gray developed blue light blocking glasses. And if you are a prescription glass wearer as well, they have those. You can combine blue light with prescription. They've got those on the website, okay? And what blue light does is it blocks the light emitted from the screens that we are staring at all of the time. Okay. Now I know a lot of y'all are on TikTok watching us on our for you page. We are blowing the fuck up on TikTok. It is a beautiful thing. Go follow us at BDGE double underscore. We're up at 128,000 subscribers, followers, whatever you want to see. We're, we're a TikTok brand now. I'm sorry, YouTube. You hate to see it. Hate to love to see it, but you can see it with the Felix Grace because what this does is it blocks the light coming off the screen from your phone. Okay. And at night when you're trying to go to sleep, what that light does is it tells your body, it tells your eyes like, hey, this is light coming through. We are still trying to stay awake. Okay. We're not going to produce melatonin. Melatonin is the thing that puts you to sleep. It's the hormone that puts you to sleep. So the blue light shields that. If there's blue light trying to come in, it says, fuck no, get up out of here. It does its best Eddie Lacy impression when he was on the field and it runs them shits over. Okay. So it blocks the blue light, which tells your body, okay, there's no light coming in. Let's start producing melatonin. So if you're someone who sits in bed and you watch TV at night, or if you're on the screen and you're looking at TikToks, you're looking at Twitter, you're watching me on YouTube right now, you should be watching me with a pair on. We could, we could look at like, we, look at us. We could be the same person. Do it. Look like me. Act like me. Yell like me. Be fucking really annoying like me. You could do it all with Felix Gray. Okay. So go check out Felix Gray down below. Use the link. I uh, think BDG or BDG 15 or something. It'll, the promo code will be down below to get you 15% off your purchase plus free shipping. So use that link. It'll get you the discount. These things are so fucking high quality. I could not suggest them more highly. I love Felix Gray. You will love Felix Gray. I love Rashad Bateman, which is why he is my 201. He is in a position to go nuts this year. I know this is not a very high volume passing offense, but Hollywood Brown was really good in this offense last year. Got a lot of targets last year while Mark Andrews dominated. Now Hollywood's obviously out of the picture. They have nothing at wide receiver. They really, really have nothing there outside of Bateman, which tells you they just have a ton of confidence in this kid, okay? He's going to be the wide receiver one. He's going to get all of Lamar Jackson targets. Pause. I know you guys are going to be like, what the fuck does that mean? Very funny. Very funny. Rashad Bateman's production this year ain't going to be funny. It's going to be serious. Again, this is business. I like Rashad Bateman. And yes, I'm taking him over every wide receiver in this class. That might sound crazy. Only because we've just been hyping up the rookies for the last four months. So you fall in love with the guys like Drake London and Garrett Wilson. I'm still taking Bateman over him. I think he's going to be a PPR monster. I think he's route running as good as anyone in this year's class by far and away. I'm so excited to see what Rashad Bateman can do this year. So yes, I'm taking Bateman over the other guys one for one. But they are right behind him in the same tier. Drake London at the 202, Garrett Wilson at the 203. And you might say to yourself, well, Drake London's been my wide receiver one in the rookie class. You know, ton of opportunity. Love him as a player. My comp for him was Brandon Marshall. So you shouldn't have any questions for me about my love for Drake London. Um, he's going to be a very fun player to watch for a very long time. He's also under the age of 21, or he might have just turned 21. So he is really, really young. That's a great asset to have in Dynasty. Garrett Wilson, you might be saying to yourself, why is Garrett Wilson above you, uh, Elijah Moore? And a lot of you guys make that, you know, the argument like, oh, we, you know, he's a rookie. He's never even stepped on the field. And we've already seen Elijah Moore break out. Like Elijah Moore has a couple big games. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And that was while Corey Davis was hurt and was out of the game. Here's the thing. Like the Jets kind of told you how they felt about Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore. They've been trying, they tried to sign Debo Samuel. They tried to sign Tyree Kill. And then they drafted Garrett Wilson early in the first round. It's very, very clear that they think they need a wide receiver one in that offense. And that's what Garrett Wilson becomes. They couldn't have made it more clear for you guys. They couldn't have said it in a more commonsensical way from all their moves and all the rumors and reports from this offseason. Elijah Moore is not their one. He is a very, very good wide receiver two. But they clearly saw Garrett Wilson, who got much more draft capital than Elijah Moore did, as their one, and they will run their, their offense accordingly through Garrett Wilson. He is a better prospect, in my opinion, than Elijah Moore was, which is saying a lot. I liked Elijah Moore a lot. Everybody did. You know, it's not a fucking hot take. Garrett Wilson is awesome. Garrett Wilson has Stefan Diggs vibes. He has o OBJ vibes. He has, he has a lot of really fucking good vibes going on there. He'd thrive out in California, okay? If he didn't go to Ohio State, he would dominate. He would have been the number one overall pick if he went to USC because of the motherfucking vibes coming out of this kid. Garrett Wilson, awesome. 
route runner, statistics, got it all going on. He can make plays downfield. He's going to be the true one in this Jets offense. Hoping Zach Wilson takes a step up. I would take Wilson over Elijah Moore. I, I don't think that should be a hot take, but I feel like we're going to get some bike lash in the comment section. Pickett is up at 204. Uh, and basically, this is a lot of this year's class. So if you looked at my rookie rankings, which you can get up on the site right now, bdge.co, if you've still got dynasty drafts, if you've still got uh, your rookie drafts going on, you could purchase it there, or you can get it via prizepicks.com. The easiest way to get uh, our rookie rankings and access to everything on our site right now is by signing up on prize picks. It's also the cheapest and most affordable way to do it. If you go to prize picks and you deposit $10, use promo code BDGE when you do so, uh, you'll get $10 on the account plus an extra $10 that'll match whatever you put down there. And you'll get an email from us getting access to our website, which has our rookie rankings. And it just goes accordingly. Drake London, Garrett Wilson, I have Pickett next. Uh, Pickett, again, first round pick. Uh, he's a tier far behind the other quarterback. So as much as I projected how much I like Pickett this year, again, like keep it in context. He's still not as highly valued as these other quarterbacks. 20th pick overall goes to a good situation. The, the, the upside is not, you know, of what these other guys have. He's not going to put up 50 rushing yards a game. He's probably not going to throw for 40 touchdowns in a season, but he could have a nice safe floor. And I like that in my quarterback too in super flex leagues. I think having elite super flex quarterbacks in dynasty is a little bit overrated. Like I'm, I've won many championships with dudes like Kirk Cousins, Matt Ryan, and like the Kenny Pickett's a revolving door of like three safe 18 to 20 point per game fantasy quarterbacks. So I like Pickett there. Burks is up at my 205. Elijah Moore at the 206. I think Burks has a little bit more upside as a player. I think he's at this point definitely a little bit more risky and definitely not bust proof like Elijah Moore seems to be. But I like upside when it comes to wide receivers because at the end of the day, most wide receiver twos and threes don't really uh, move the needle for you as a fantasy player. If you draft wide receiver twos and threes and they finish there, they didn't do anything for your team. The ones that actually move the needles are the ones that you draft at the wide receiver two or three position that end up being a top four, six, eight fantasy wide receiver overall like the Cooper Cups versus Robert Woods is a debate that won you or you, know, you probably missed the playoffs if you if you chose wrongly in that debate last year so for me Burks over Moore makes a lot of sense because he's an actual needle mover if he hits in Tennessee Kenneth Walker at the 207 Chris Olave at the 208 Elijah Mitchell down at the 209 Elijah Mitchell is a guy that I want to buy into a little bit in redraft he's not a dynasty asset I really want to hold on to he was awesome as a rookie wasn't a big time pass catcher and there's not much analysis that I can give that y'all don't already know. Like this is going to be a revolving door at the San Francisco 49er running back position in the future, at least, right? Maybe he get, he's going to get the first crack at being the starter. Does that mean 20 touches a game? Maybe. Can he stay healthy? No one in San Francisco ever really fucking can. I, I don't know. I, I just, I, there's something about it that feels like last season and maybe this season are like the perfect storm seasons where everything kind of cracks right, but like his dynasty value will crater very, very quickly. So I'm hesitant on Elijah Moore right now in dynasty startups. I would rather someone safer or someone younger like the Olave, like the Kenneth Walker over him. And we get to Jameson Williams at 210, a lot of upside coming back from the ACL on Detroit. Don't know the quarterback situation, but he's a guy that you know, I want, I think you can argue him up all the way up to like the 203, 204, 205 area as well. But in my rookie rankings, he's, you know, down at the 107 ish, 108, right after Alave. Sky Moore at the 211. Sky Moore in Kansas City, man. Again, like, go look at the prize picks numbers. Go up there. They have season long props for a lot of the veteran wide receivers, but a lot of the rookie wide receivers as well. He's up at 800 or 850. It's the highest, the second highest among the rookie wide receivers. There's not really a lot of competition there in KC, man. With Tyreek Hill out, it's Kelsey. And then behind him, like, y'all want to go nuts about Juju? You want to go nuts about Marquez Valdez-Scantling? Like, if you want to go nuts about them, go to a fucking insane asylum. Because that's, that's not the right shit to be going nutty about. They're whatever wide receivers at this point. Juju hasn't been good in three years. He's got fucking probably, probably be doing less on TikTok than we, we are at this point. Probably losing passion for everything. I feel bad for Juju. Probably a good kid, but not a good draft pick. So, Sky Moore over those two players. Marcus Valdez can't have done shit in forever. I don't know why people keep getting super excited about him, but Sky Moore will probably be the wide receiver one by the end of this season. So I want the wide receiver one attached to Patrick Mahomes. Shouldn't, should go without saying. 212. Hmm. Hmm. Who do y'all got at 212? There are some interesting players still available on the board. Um, we have Devontae Smith, of course. We have Kadarius Toney, of course. We have Andre Stevenson, who you're probably not going to take over those guys. I went with Kadarius Toney over Devontae Smith. And here's why. Devontae Smith was, don't get me wrong, he's a dynasty asset I would like to have. Very good rookie year. Over 900 yards receiving. It's not something that rookies do frequently. Good rookies are starting to do it. Great wide receivers are starting to do that pretty frequently, actually, right? 
you know, we could make the argument like since 2000, but like the, the years 2000 to 2010, 2012, 2015, even are like starting to become less and less relevant when it comes to passing and receiving statistics nowadays, because the game has changed so much. So we're seeing a lot of rookie wide receivers come in and, you know, put up 800, 900 receiving yards as a rookie over the last five years, a percentage, the rate of guys who have done that much higher. So Devontae Smith don't want to take anything away from him. Really good rookie year, wildly inconsistent. He is an older prospect, right? He stayed for a while at Alabama. Jalen Hurts is going to be the guy. He showed a lot of inconsistency as a passer last year. They went so run heavy down the stretch. Like starting in week eight, if you look at Jalen Hurts' pass attempts, 14, 17, 23, 24, 31, 26, 29, 26 to end the year. Starting in week eight, he had one game over 29 pass attempts. I just think Philly learned what they needed to do in order to be a good team and like you know, win games down the stretch. And that was clearly not have Jalen Hurts pass the ball 39 times, 48 times, 37 times, you know, what he did in the beginning of the year. And that's going to hurt Devontae Smith. The obvious thing that's going to kill Devontae Smith's value is A.J. Brown is there. A.J. Brown is an alpha if you've ever seen a fucking alpha, okay? Devontae Smith can be good, but he can't be a great fantasy player anymore as long as A.J. Brown is there and they're throwing the ball 28 times a game. It's just not statistically possible. Philly's going to be, and the problem is like Jalen Hurst can be good and continue to be their quarterback for a couple of years, but they're way too good of a team right now to have anywhere near like an early pick in the first round next year, right? To get one of these like top five quarterbacks. They're not going to be a bottom five team in the NFL. They have too much weapon power. And that means like they're going to be stuck with either Hurts or mediocrity at quarterback for a long time, most likely. And the combination of all these things happening outside of like an A.J. Brown injury, like the knees and the foot have been a problem. So it's possible that that actually does become a problem. I just I like it's really hard to imagine a, a, a ceiling for Devontae Smith. Like, can he be a thousand yard receiver? Yes. Nowadays, like a thousand yard receivers don't really don't do much for you in fantasy, man. Last year, 23 players had over a thousand yards. In 2020, oh, that was actually only just wide receivers too. So we're not even counting tight ends and stuff. There are just a lot of players yearly, annually that hit a thousand receiving yards, man. So as much as you want to throw around arbitrary numbers, like a thousand yards, and again, like maybe Devontae Smith goes over that, but it's really hard to imagine a path to high upside for Devontae Smith. So I don't like using picks necessarily on guys like that, which is why I went with Tony. Tony's got about as many fucking red flags as a 22 year old girl in the East Village out here. Um, so it makes me scared to approach her slash him slash Tony. However, just like if you follow me, I'm obsessed with Tony. I really, really just think this kid is special. Uh, what he did on the field last year is just something that you don't see from a lot of players. And I think his upside is crazy, crazy, crazy high. And maybe I'm maybe I'm a little bit too high. But again, I haven't met the 212. So I don't think it's crazy. I think the argument here is just Kadarius Tony or Devontae Smith and Dynasty. And I'll probably be on the minority side of things saying Tony over Devontae Smith. So y'all can yell at me in the comments if you think otherwise. But Again, the, the the bull case for Smith is kind of tough. I really like Tony. So I will be taking him at the 212. I ain't going to ask questions twice about it. And we will wrap up this video, okay? If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the button that looks like this down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you go cop the rookie rankings as well as season-long stuff on Prize Picks. Go over to prizepicks.com or use the app link down below. It'll take you straight to your app store. When you deposit $10 or more, use promo code BDGE and that will hook you up with everything, the deposit match, etc. And then go check out Felix Gray. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed by these glasses. Blue light blockers, save your health, save your life, save your mother. Love you. Bye. Wow.